lovelies, good morning. It is a beautiful day in Sister Bay. I suppose you could be watching this at any time of the day, but it's absolutely exquisite this morning. The air is a little bit chilly, the tourists are leaving, everything's starting to go back to normal. We've had a wonderful season, and I thought this would be the perfect time to share with you all of my thrifting, junking, antiquing, barn sailing treasures that I've found over this past season. Now here the season begins in April when things start to open back up after the long winter and it's probably gonna go about another month until the end of October. I found so many treasures that speak to my style, to my love of old things, things tattered, things worn, things that contribute to the overall look that I'm going for. Now my particular style, I began to cultivate it about 20 years ago with a book called The Paris Apartment by my friend Claudia Strasser. Now these days, my look is a bit more rustic, a bit more farmhouse, but you for sure have spotted those elements of the glam and I did find some items to contribute to that as well this year. I'm going to be a little bit gauche and I am going to share with you the prices that I paid for each item simply in the spirit of education. Maybe so you can get a baseline, so you can get a feel of what things are going for out there. Now there are three things that I'm not afraid to do when I'm out looking for treasures for my home. The first is I'm not afraid to ask for a bargain and you can do so tastefully as well. It's very important to be respectful and maybe ask on the second day of the sale and not the first. Don't ask for a huge discount, maybe 10%, maybe 15. Maybe if your bill is 120, ask if they'll come down to 110. Keep in mind that often this is a side hustle for the vendor. Sometimes it's their full-time occupation. So you wanna be really respectful of that. But you never know when they could be completely sick of an item. A lot of times if you're a vendor or you're a junker that resells things, you don't want items in your store or you don't want items on the same barn sale from one to the next. They're anxious to get rid of it. And you also never know if they found something in a box lot, say at an auction, and they literally got it for free and anything you offer them would be a profit. So just be respectful, keep in mind you wanna be tasteful, be kind, but don't be afraid to ask for a bargain. Number two, I am not afraid to pay full price for something. If it is an item that I know is going to contribute to our farmhouse renovation, to our farmhouse deconstruction, this huge project we've undertaken of turning back the clock on this 1980s house, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger if it's a one-of-a-kind item and I know I'm never gonna find it again. And thirdly, I am not afraid to buy an item even if I have absolutely no idea how or where I'm going to use that. And the perfect example of that is my copper sink. I bought that about four years ago. I had no use for it. It was dirty and covered in cobwebs, but it was $150 and I knew I would never find another one like that again. So I bought it, I stuck it in my barn. I had no idea we would end up here in Door County. And how could I have ever imagined that it would fit perfectly under my kitchen window? So let's head back to Sol Rocher. I'm gonna take you around and show you all my treasures. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. I thought it would be fun to start with some of the bigger architectural salvaged pieces and yes they are taking up space in the driveway and in the garage. This is a cabinet that I bought for the upstairs bathroom. So the upstairs bathroom hasn't been touched except for in one of those very first episodes of Everyday Chateau where we take out the disgusting carpeting but it's still covered in wallpaper 
a really bad like particle board vanity. It's very sad. And we have very little storage. So this is an old built-in that I found. We're gonna bring the wall out, put this in so it does act just like a built-in. It's got beautiful hardware, a really nice color, probably lead paint, so I'm gonna sand it down a little bit, get some of the chips off, and then go ahead and poly over it to seal it up. But you can see there will be lots of storage for shampoo and washcloths. This was just $35. It's going to be a great addition to the house because the house, it is a two bedroom house. There's very, very little storage. One of the detriments to having a new home, as you know, how I feel about old doors is new homes have new doors. They have doors from Lowe's and doors from Home Depot completely lacking in character, even though they're perfectly good doors, as Joel would say. So I found this beauty about four weeks ago for $28. And Bless Amelie's Lee's heart, she held onto it so it didn't fall out the back window as we drove home because I was not prepared to purchase it. Typically, you'll want to travel with bungee cords, with gloves because of lead paint and rusty nails. Try to be prepared. I was not prepared that day, but I wasn't about to let this door go. The glass is beautifully intact. The measurements just about perfectly fit our back door, so that's where it's gonna go. I'm gonna use a little stripper, take down the paint, it does have a really beautiful crazing effect, but I'm going to take down the white paint so the blue comes through, which complements the blue that we're adding to the house. And last but not least, this beauty. This oval window is going to go in the dormer that is in an attic right now, but will be our future master bath. And so we'll have the clawfoot tub and then this window this will add a ton of character to the house. The house is very linear. There's nothing round going on with the house. So I can't wait to take out the square window and pop this in. I'm gonna spray paint these to a nice iron black color, but this blue is the inspiration for the Sherman Williams color French Moir. That is the blue that we're using on the house. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. Beautiful, I found this for $40. This could easily be priced. 275 three and a quarter depending on where you found it so when I found it for $40 I was all over it in fact I think I screamed from the truck and ran for it threw my body on it and called it my own one of the biggest overhauls I'm hoping we can get done before the snow flies and I seriously doubt it but I'm holding out hope is to overhaul the front entrance of the home so just like that round window is gonna add incredible character to the little dormer the front of the home is very sterile. It's very imposing with the huge windows, and that's sort of where your eye goes. And what I want to do is soften it up by really loving on the entryway. Now my inspiration, I'm going to pop up a picture, is from a home in the Cotswolds that I saw on one of my favorite Instagram feeds, getting stuff done in heels. So this entryway is my inspiration, and I needed some wood for that. So I noticed that this beam and the little guy had been sitting out in front of a particular store here in Door County for the better part of a year. Sitting in the snow, sitting in the rain, sitting in the springtime, sitting all summer. And that's when I went in and made my offer. I figured the shopkeeper was probably sick of it sitting there. And that's kind of your cue. If you see something for a long time, don't be afraid to make an offer. So I offered $60 for this beam which is probably highway robbery. Something like this goes for hundreds of dollars at a barn salvage shop. But I thought I'd take a chance and they said yes. So now it's sitting in my driveway. If it sits here all winter, so be it. But it's the perfect wood to complete the project, to soften up the look of our entryway and give me that look that I want. Here's the door we'll be replacing with that salvage door and the stone steps that we'll be imitating over at the front. Let's go take a look at that front entryway so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I found brackets just like these at an antique store for $95 a pair at the end of the season last year, and I was devastated when I saw the price tag. Recently, I found these for $9 each. They're fabulous. Again, I don't quite know what I'm going to do with them. I have some salvaged wood in the garage that I think I could make a great shelf out of, but I don't quite have a place for that yet. 
And you know how I feel about sinks. I am a sink addict. I just found this one two days ago. Look at this detail. It is so sweet. It's so tiny. $20. This can just go in my stash. Someday soon, I'll make a little closet into the house, into a little bathroom or something. Maybe one of my daughters would like to have just a sink in their bedroom for washing their face and brushing their teeth. It's so feminine. It's so dainty. I couldn't say no. It's just going to go in inventory until it finds a purpose. Sometimes I receive gifts, and so I count those as my treasures for this season. I did receive a package from a YouTube follower that was full of treasures. These little made in England thatched roof plates. This is my inspiration while I'm in my office. It's just kind of where I put things that inspire me or little mementos. This summer for $4 at a flea market, I found this adorable thatched roof vase. I just have some dried hydrangea in, but it's so cute. So I've got it on top of some vintage books. And sometimes people just want to get rid of things. So I was at a garage sale three weekends ago and I had a little pile of stuff and I asked the homeowner I said how much do you want for this postcard because it was just laying there she's like you can have that she must have thought I was crazy but it's a vintage French postcard of Joan of Arc and it's so pretty and I love it so it's just here with my stuff stuck into the corner of my chaotic greenhouse are a perfect example of something that I'm not ready to use yet but I knew I had to have them they were $30 a piece they have beautiful warbly glass that can be removed and screens can be inserted I love the little doorknob these two matching doors are going to be the front doors to my future outdoor greenhouse that we're gonna put on the far side of the potage someday I'll be painting them bright green and for now they're just in inventory with all of my old windows that I'm gathering for that project this runner was $28. I think I'm gonna use it to cover the stairs going from one daughter's attic bedroom to the next level of attic bedrooms. It's nice and long, it's got beautiful colors, and for $28, again, I'm just gonna put that in inventory for when I have a time and a place. I am trying to create a gallery wall in the fireplace room in the hearth. But for now, I'm just gathering pieces. And again, sometimes if I don't know what I'm going to do with something, I'll just put it somewhere and wait for it to speak to me. That's what's happening with this little guy. I found this for $28. The frame alone is beautiful, but this is a gorgeous pastoral. I believe it's pastels. I loved the coloring. To just make it work propped up on this bookcase, I brought in the hydrangea and just let them dry on top. This is one of my favorite pieces from this season, $28. It has a Racine, Wisconsin sticker, so I am very sentimental. I love to know where things came from. I love it when they're marked. I love that little bit of history. This is a beautiful piece. This little needlepoint footstool was one of my first finds of the season and it was featured in the spring tour of the house. I love it. It's ready. It's teddy. This is the perfect place for it right now. I think it was $8. Something else that was featured in the spring farmhouse tour are the champagne buckets that I found. Late this spring for $12 a piece, I do have a champagne bucket collection. I have both Clicquot and Cordon Rouge. I love these. They're popped up here. I found a stash of old French envelopes at a resale shop this summer for $8 a bundle. So of course I grabbed all of them. Look at the handwriting. It's so gorgeous. I love it. And I found these in Paris, these opera glasses, years ago. And so, of course, when I saw a second pair at a shop up here for $12, I snatched them up in a beautiful French blue. Love the details on those. Lots of little steals throughout the summer. I love old jewelry boxes. I've had this one for years. This little sweetheart I found at a thrift shop for $6. So I thought he could sit right here on my annotated Sherlock Holmes. Proud as you please, le petit. Okay, now let's talk about something with a little higher price point. I love Trumeau 
and I found these cuties for a hundred and a quarter. And by cuties, I mean they are a pair. And I love how it adds a little bit of the glam to the farmhouse. Again, with the sepia colors, they're in mint condition. I have been wanting to find a church pew, and I finally did. A lot of times they're really long, or they're a little bit more than I'm willing to pay. This one's nice and short, it's probably the deacon's bench, and it was $50, and it comes from a church in Sister Bay that is now a restaurant, so I'm very happy to have this. It's in the kitchen for now. Eventually, it's going to go in the boot room. Right now, the boot room is sort of laundry room, refrigerator, fruits and vegetable chaos, but eventually it will be a proper boot room and this will sit right underneath the windows so the kids can take their boots off in the winter. Like I mentioned, some things I receive are gifts. The pitcher I received from my mom for my birthday and the chamber pot, ironically, I had been eyeballing at a thrift shop for weeks. It was $18 and lo and behold, somebody gave it to me as a gift. They saw it, it reminded them of me, and they gave it to me. So I love these two pieces of transferware. They're a beautiful addition to my collection. This beautiful cheese dome was only $18 at a local resale shop. I still can't believe it. We use it all the time for its intended use. And in its off season, I use it for display, which I just love. I got these two gorgeous pieces of copper for my birthday from Joel. This was 25 at a local antique shop and this little cutie with the fish and the beautiful verdigris was eight. This I just use as display. This I'm sending out to be retinned so that we can use it, practically speaking. And I can't wait to share more about that with you in a future video on copper. For my bedroom, I found this sweet little pillow. I'm always looking for a new throw pillow to add to my bed. It was only $12, and I love the needle point. And of course, the fringe on the end. Are you hungry? No, I'm not hungry. Are you hungry? I don't really want oatmeal. It's the middle of the day. For my bedroom, I found this beautiful settee for $15 this last weekend at a barn sale. It was clean. The rattan is ripped right here behind the doily, but that's okay. You come to expect that. Maybe I'll learn to repair rattan. But for now, it's a great place just to sit down in the bedroom. It was beautiful cranberry color. It goes perfect with the space. It gives the kids something to crawl on when they come in here. And I couldn't resist it for that price. I would be remiss if I didn't share just a couple of the fashion finds that I discovered this summer. I love thrifting for clothing. I found this adorable little crusher with the plume for $6 and this mint condition London Fog trench coat. Fantastic. I love it with a scarf and some jeans and a pair of high heels this fall. It will be perfect. It's in mint condition. It was $12. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like a little bit more on this topic, a little bit more about asking for a deal, cultivating your own style, be sure to visit ParisianFarmGirl.com where I have written a corresponding blog post. But I hope this leaves you inspired and encouraged to go find treasures and make beauty in your own surroundings. I'll talk to you soon. A pianto. Filming. You're filming?